Hi, Nancy Daniel here, and I wanted to share um, a story about a vision that I've just had actually even this morning. I, the Lord keeps showing me the darkness, and I keep seeing the darkness over the body of Christ. And I, I kind of wondered about why in the world is there such darkness over the body of Christ, and where is the light? I'm reminded of the time of Josiah in the Bible, uh, in the Old Testament. Josiah was able to change the laws. As we're seeing things happen now in our country, where laws can be changed, and things can be worked from the government standpoint. But the body of Christ needs to change. In Josiah's time, we find that the hearts of the people did not change. And the Hulda, the prophetess, shows up with Josiah and she says, you know, too bad, so sad, too little, too late, my prayer phrase, of course, that it's going to happen in your time. There's going to be a big crash, or not in your time, but in the time of your children. And the thing is that Josiah did everything in his power to, to turn the thing. And I know that we're praying hard for the government. We're praying hard for different uh, venues. But what about the people? What about the body of Christ? Where are we? And then I kept saying to the Lord, where is the light? Where is the light in the body? And, you know, we know that Christ is the light. But we have to <clears throat> really look at that. Here's a scripture for you. It says, this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there's no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not live according to the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So to walk in the light and to release the light, what is that light? It's the light of Christ. And we see in the, the word light, actually, if you look it up in the Greek, one definition of the word light um, actually talks about admitting a light as in a lamp. But it's also a heavenly light, which is the light of Christ, which is his glory that we admit as he's in me and I'm in him. I'm seated in him, but he's in me, Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. But there's an all, another part of that. It's a place where there's a power of understanding moral or spiritual truth. Okay, so how do we do that? It's not just head knowledge of what we understand, but it's the heart knowledge and the transformation that happens to me that changes me from the inside out. You know, I often say that integrity is the outward working of the inward work of character. What does that mean? Well, character is the thing that the Lord is carving on my heart. His truth, His word, as I am in Him and spending time with Him, He's changing me. And then what happens is my outward actions, my movement becomes light, becomes salt and light actually to others because it's flowing out of me. It just, it's something that just begins to, to flow um, as, I'm, as I'm moving in him. And so we, we do have to be careful and to, to be able to walk in that light of Christ. We need to allow ourselves to be transformed. Sometimes we, we have the appearance of God, but we're not walking in it. You know, the gifts of God, I kept hearing this morning, the gifts of God are without repentance. And I just kept saying, Lord, what does that mean? It was just so heartbreaking to hear that in the Spirit. And the Lord was showing me that, you know, sometimes, you know, as we all get busy, sometimes what's happening is that we are operating in gifts, but we're missing the Lord. We're missing that relationship. We're not allowing that light to so shine out of us. And we need to be careful how we stand lest we fall. And so if, if there's darkness around us, you know, I'm reminded of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, too. In Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, you, you, you realize Lot had been there for a little while. And he was protecting himself, right, and his family. But did anything change? Did anything change in his environment because he was there? So we have to ask ourselves, what's changing in our environment because we are here? 
what what is changing because Christ in me is the light that is shining out to people? What's changing around my life? And if nothing's changing around my life or my church, then I have to say, Father, what what's happening? Where is the light? Why is the light not pushing the darkness back? Why are we still seeing so much darkness in my area? And why is the atmosphere not changing? Sometimes it's just a place of being, a place of my, I, I'm, I'm just in my alignment with God. I'm aligning with heaven because of my quiet time. So in my alignment, just my walk should bring light. And just as a church, an ecclesia, the ruling and reigning, the called out ones, we are separate from the darkness. We are supposed to be called out and separate to, to be able to rule and reign. And how are we going to do that? if we're not walking in the light. So the other part of the scripture was about sin. We know Jesus has forgiven us, that we are under the blood. But, you know, to walk in that place of holiness with God, to walk in that place is to walk in the place of real reality with Him, knowing where my heart is, that I can ask Him anything, and He can reveal the darkness in my own heart. And as he does that, I come to the place of repentance. And as I do, what it is I'm identifying with the death of Christ, which is the holiest place, the holiest of all, the holy of holies was on the cross where Christ became that sacrifice. And as I identify with that and the Lord's blood begins to speak on my behalf, then what happens? Then I get the victory and my light so shines. So this is that place of walking in the fullness of, of the Lord to let my light so shine. Now, I don't profess at any moment to know the whole picture of that, nor do I understand really how to allow the light and the glory to be released in my life. But I can tell you this, that I know from, and there are many scriptures on light and letting your light so shine, not hiding it under a bushel basket even. There, there's so many scriptures, and I, I want to encourage you to dig into that. And I want to encourage you that just because you're protected and safe, it's like Esther. Esther was safe and protected, but what happened with Esther? You know what? It would be called, it should, it should be called into a situation if she didn't open her mouth, if she didn't declare something. And this is where we are right now. And so I want to challenge you to go, go deeper in the Lord in this idea of how do, do I let my light shine? And what's causing my light not to so shine? Why is my atmosphere and my area around me not having the light that it needs? And then, Lord, if I need to open my mouth somewhere, will you show me where I need to open my mouth so that your light would be seen around this world? Lord, would you just give us the courage and the faith and the hope to walk in those things that you're calling us to? as you're calling your body into a deeper place and a deeper walk with you. And Lord, we're going to be careful to give you all the praise and the glory and the honor in this, in this day. And we give you thanks right now in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen.